RTO instruction used in a conveyor example. The last lab session demonstrating the characteristics of the RTO instruction, instruction instructing a timer data type. Next we're going to use an RTO in a practical application and we're going to continue with our conveyors. Looking in our manual we have our gravity conveyor and two powered conveyors and we have four photo eyes, one, two, three, and four PE. Coming off of the gravity conveyor, the roller conveyor, the cart is just rolled up against the leading edge, the entrance of one conveyor, and stop there unless the conveyor is running. If it's running, then it pulls them onto the conveyor. And then we use 1 and 2 PE to detect carton size and to detect presence onto the conveyor. So 1 PE and 4 PE can serve the identical purpose. And we don't have a equivalent to 3 PE on the roller conveyor, but we could. In other words, we could have add another photo eye to the left of 1 PE at the end of the roller conveyor to tell us that there's a carton there. That could also influence our decision in our logic and how we run the logic. What we're going to do is use an RTO instruction to implement a lubrication system. Now there was a question here that said how many bearings would you estimate are present in just a visible portion of this conveyor material handling system? Just give a casual estimate. Well if you counted all the bearings on the rollers that's uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's about 12 or so rollers. I mean that would be you know 20 plus bearings right there. And then on the motorized conveyors themselves, you're going to have two bearings on each roller at the leading edge and trailing edge of the conveyor. So you've got more than 20 bearings there. That was just to make you conscious of the fact that there are a bunch of bearings on this conveyor. And these conveyors run a lot. They're subject to heat, dirt, cold, all kinds of conditions. In the old days, they had somebody called an oiler <laughs> who ran around with an oil squirt can and and lubricated these bearings. Now most of these bearings these days are going to be a uh, powdered bronze bushing that are self-oiling. In other words, they're manufactured with oil embedded in the powdered bronze. Or they're roller bearings and they're sealed. If there's no real heat involved, if there's not enough load to cause these bearings to generate heat, then the lubricant that's in there, that's sealed in there, is probably going to last a lifetime. But just to keep things on the flow here, let's say that we're going to install an automatic lubrication system, such as you see there on the screen. That mechanism to the left side is a reservoir of, if you want to say, grease or lubricant. And then there is a line leaving that mechanism and going to three manifolds. And these manifolds have lines from them to uh, where the zert fittings would be on the bearings, but to the bearings. So anytime you apply air pressure to that reservoir, it forces lubricant out through those manifolds to the grease. So lubrication is based on hours run and it's also based on how much lubricant you want every time you apply the lube. So that's what we're going to do with our RTO instruction. So we're going to go back to the logic that we had. Occasionally as I'm adding logic behind the scenes to try to keep these videos short, I will pop back in to show you something. I need to put an RTO in a branch. Now you know how to add a branch around. But I can click on the elbow there and type in RTO enter and I've got it. Now not in every case can you do that. Uh, if you click here and type in RTO enter it puts it in there. But notice that it replaced what was there. Well, We don't want that. Okay. You see what I mean? So you've got to be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. The logic that we added, we put a RTO instruction in parallel with the OTE that controls the motor on a conveyor. So anytime that we tell the motor to energize and move the conveyor belt, 
then we are enabling this RTO instruction that is addressing T4 colon 0 timer data type. We also added a rung so we could reset, at least temporarily reset, the RTO while we're working on our logic. So I had you take in start the conveyor, you see it accumulating, stop it, start it, stop it, start it, stop it. Then I ask you some questions. Does the accum register halt incrementing when the conveyor is off? Of course it does, yes. Does the accum register clear when the rung goes false? No, it does not. And of course that is the behavior that we're looking for for our system. Does the conveyor stop when the accum equals the preset? Okay, so to do that we'll just start again and let it time out. Okay, we timed out and of course nothing happened because we're not using any of the control bits from T40. We're not using the done or the time and timer timing to do anything. And even if I stop the conveyor, that has no effect on the timer data type T4 colon 0 because this is an RTO. It has no false execution. So once it times out, it's timed out. And start and stop in the conveyor has no effect on it whatsoever. Now if I clear it, then when I start it back up, it's accumulating again. Does the conveyor stop when the accum equals the preset? No. Does the accum register continue accumulating when the accum equals the preset? No. In the event of the timer accumulating equal equaling the preset, is our cue to lubricate the bearings? What do we need to add? Well, obviously, if we want to lubricate the bearings when the accumulant equals the preset, we need to use the done bit. We need to use the done bit to trigger the lubrication system. So I'm going to add another timer to that end. I had you run the conveyor until it timed out. In other words, enough runtime has accumulated on the conveyor, on the bearings, on the current uh, lube that's in there, and now we want to refresh that lubrication. Done bit comes on and it started a, or it enabled a TON instruction that is addressing T4 colon 2. Time base of a hundredth of a second and the preset is 150, which would be one and a half seconds. Okay, that was the first step. So now we have something actuating when that RTO times out. When T40 times out, then we start T42 and it runs for one and a half seconds. Okay, we added in some more logic and we took the done bit to reset timer T40. The cycle is this. The RTO accumulates until it reaches 12 seconds. Now that could be 12 hours in an actual application. I'm, I'm keeping the intervals here short enough to make them manageable so you don't fall asleep waiting for something to happen. So we're going 12 seconds on T40. That's the total accumulated time on the bearings before we lube them. Pretend like that's 12 hours. When that's done, then we want to activate our lubrication system for 150 hundredths of a second, or 1.5 seconds. So during that time, the timer timing bit, T4 colon 2 timer timing, energizes a solenoid that applies plant air pressure to that reservoir to push grease out through the manifolds. At the end of that one and a half seconds, the timer timing bit goes off, the solenoid is de-energized, and the done bit comes on, and the done bit, it doesn't reset the TON for T4 colon 2, it resets T40 the RTO, because remember the RTO needs to be reset. The cycle is the RTO instructs the T4 colon 0 to accumulate on and off when it gets to uh, 1200. Then the timer timing bit goes off, the done bit comes on, and that energizes or enables T4 2. T4 2 timer timing pulse energizes the solenoid, and at the end of the one and a half seconds, the done bit clears T40. When T40 clears, its done bit goes back to zero and that resets T42. So I'll play with this logic for a while. I'm going to go ahead and start the conveyor again and you see very quickly it's done. 
and then it starts all over again. So as long as the conveyor is running, then every, let's call it 12 hours instead of 12 seconds. Every 12 hours, the loop system comes on for a period of time that you specify. Of course, you would have to work that out by uh, empirically watching your loop system to see if it was able to push any dirty grease or lube out from the bearing during that one and a half seconds. You may have to increase it, or if it's pushing too much lube, decrease it. But you get the point. So as long as the conveyor is running, and remember, the RTO, when the accumulate equals the preset, that's the end of a length of time of runtime on the motor, therefore the bearings. Uh, it doesn't know that the motor's been turning on and off. It just knows that it's accumulated 12 hours or 12 seconds of you know rotation time on the bearings. It's time to lube it. So if this thing was shut down over the weekend, it was shut down right there at one hour and 50 minutes. We'll just I'm just making up the times on this. Then it sets just like that. When they come in Monday morning, start running the conveyor again. Turns back on, it starts accumulating again. If you stop for some sort of a breakdown, timer stops, start again, stop again. I mean, 12 hours is a long time. So we continually see that it accumulates. And to shorten up this video a little bit, let's just let our time out, fires the solenoid, and pushes lube or grease into the system. As far as fill in blanks in the book on the last basically the last page of the slab that had questions. Uh, does the accumulate register retain the runtime? This was after we ran it a couple seconds and then stopped. Yes, it does. Uh, then down below on that page, uh, basically I can't did a screen capture when T40 was done, the accumulate equal the preset, and the loop pulse was done. I had to capture it right there. Of course, I cheated because you'll notice that the power rails are not highlighted. So I went offline and manipulated the data just to capture this. But this would happen for a couple scans. You would see this online, but with the eye, you're not going to see it. So the question was, what? why do we have to reset T40 instance of a timer data type? Well, because it's an RTO. It has no false execution. It also asks what should happen on the next scan. Well, the very next scan, because TON instruction, because of the way it addresses T42, the done bit of T42 will reset T40, and T40 done bit will then go off and reset T42. So that's what you expect to happen next. Reset T40, then the TO run goes false, resetting T42. I, yeah, there was a little bit more in the lab, and basically it was just a discussion. We've already discussed how this logic works.